Welcome back to round one, the show where we play just the beginning of a game so you can get a taste and feel for what that game is going to be like. Now, today I do want to have a caveat because we're doing something a little bit different mm -hmm. with this game. This is called Bardsung from Steamforged Games, and this is a giant campaign game. It is a big campaign game, and we are kind of jumping Fast forward into the future yeah, into a boss encounter. Yeah, otherwise our round one would literally be just like setting <laughs> up for, for a scenario. Yeah, it's it's a big game. And uh, so we played a little bit of it to yeah. get our feet wet. And then with the help of Steamforged, we kind of fast forwarded through what effectively would represent about 20 plus hours of game yeah. play yeah. to get to this first boss encounter because... There's a lot of content out there, not as much on the boss encounters. So we wanted to give you a taste of what that was like. Exactly. For those who aren't aware, this is, like I said, a narrative game where you're going to have branching paths that take you through chapters. Now, that system is pretty interesting. And you can take a look at our other videos to learn more about how that exploration system works. But suffice to say, you're going to be making decisions along the way and collecting potentially cards and treasures and new items, collecting experience and gold and directing the narrative in a in a different fashion. So the boss that we're playing today is the Crimson Hook. And this is a boss that potentially you might not even see in your play. But if you do, it's probably gonna be pretty early on. Like David said, about 20 hours in. Yeah. This game could be a lot longer. I mean, if you play through the whole campaign. It's a which, lot of hours. Yeah, of I mean, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a giant campaign with a lot of narratives. And we'll be so, honest, we, we have given it a shot yeah. to get our feet wet even with this encounter. Uh, but we didn't get too far into it because we wanted to be surprised. Yeah, it's a, it's, too. it's a tough a tough encounter. So yeah, we did set that up. Every one of these bosses is going to have a chapter in the book, and it's going to basically tell you which cards to pull out to add into the boss, and then which mini to use, and then all of the bosses like special abilities and everything. This is somebody Crimson Hook rides a giant spider, moves around the battlefield a lot, knocks us all out of the way, and they have three different initiative cards that are going to be added to this marching order. And I think this is one of the unique things about Bardsung is the way that these bosses play out is they get to act multiple times and mm. they do different things on each one of those. And then mixed in there as well, we have our three characters. We've kind of spent some time developing these characters, leveling them up and kind of choosing focuses for those characters. D David or Emily, I don't know who wants to Emily, introduce go, your go character. Right so I am a Night Feather, and some of the things that have been upgraded for mine is that I have higher dexterity, which I hope will be useful in this encounter, um, especially because I use my dexterity for a lot of my moves. I am kind of dodging in and out out of the way. And then I also got a new ability, um, Poisoned Blade, which is going to allow me to poison things if I can hit or do a critical hit. So I'm excited for that. Also on some of my weapons, I have some extra runes. So my Raven's Talon now has an effect where I can dodge at the start of a turn. That's nice. So I'm gonna be dodging at the beginning, dodging at the end, trying to just dodge all the time. Just rolling around the board all yeah, over the Yeah, basically. Place. And then I also have something on my Crow's Murder where I get to add one to my attack rolls. Um, yeah, they're so gems. Yeah, yeah, I, I just don't know which one. This I took sapphire. runes um, for my character. Um, runes are defensive implements that go onto like your shields, whereas gems can go onto your offensive weapons, uh, which is really, really good for you. But the Dawn Guard, which is what I'm playing, is more of the tank character. They're going to try to survive and block attacks. I earned two, or ended up with two runes. I can only use one, uh, but you can swap these runes in and out, and you can swap the gems. So you can kind of customize your character for the particular um, adventure. And I, I kind of leveled up a lot of my abilities, and I actually took a few new abilities by spending experience. The newest one that I just got is Wrath of God. And I'm, that's just a cool move. And I hope that I actually get to use that because it, it's just a really cool. It's the power move. We'll see. It, it's the big power move. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. So I'm the light weaver. So I am sort of the magic user. I'm, I think, the only one of the three of us that has range yes. for the most part. You have I'm a couple close. abilities that I have give range. I have one that like boosts you from range, but yeah. But I have range innate in my character with some abilities that uses that. Uh, the, on the ability front, I upgraded some of the ones that I had, like Arcane Bolt. Um, but then I got a few kind of like, like hero pose type moves, one of which <laughs> is called Azure Leap. And this lets me move out of a space, or I'd rather not move, but I'm placing my character. So I don't have to roll if I'm in there with enemies yeah. who could okay. potentially keep nice. me from moving. And then I can place my uh, miniature in a space up to three spaces away. And then when I land in that space, it basically can push everyone out of that space. So I can kind of like oh, cool. jump into the thick of things and like 
That really is like a things, superhero landing. Break things up a little bit. A little bit. I really hope you get to use that, honestly. <laughs> Another thing I have, I have a ruby on my arcane focus. The arcane focus is pretty much my staff. Okay. Uh, but the ruby lets me have a plus one to damage rolls, which is significant nice. because that's going to determine whether we hit or do critical hits. And this system is kind of interesting because it's it uses yeah. dice, but it uses it in a slightly different fashion where you're really building everything off of these abilities. And then yeah. the last card I have that I want to talk about is this Brigand Lieutenant. This is ah. something that would be acquired as you play through the game in a certain challenge during an exploration. And if you happen to come across this and succeed in defeating the Brigand Tamer in this case, right. you're able to keep this card ongoing. And hopefully, we think, we're pretty sure, it's going to come into play by having it with this encounter. Yeah, it should. I mean, you get to know a lot about what the enemy you're fighting uh, during setup. And this yeah. one in particular tells us that it's going to call on some reinforcements from the particular chapter th that we just completed. However, like David said, if we manage to find those through challenge cards and defeat them early, they're not going to come and reinforce uh, the Crimson Hook, which hopefully will, will give us a little bit of breathing room because... This board might look sparse, but the Crimson Hook does call in reinforcements. We know this after the first round. Yeah, so things get a little dicey so after we'll the first round. So we'll just have to kill round. them first, I guess. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's going to happen. No, we're going to play effectively two rounds, which is going through the uh, marching order a couple times, and you'll see how things change up. Yeah, oh, for sure. And we've already we dealt out the marching order for the first round, and we're going to take that order, um, meaning the Dawn Guard is going to go first. Now... Like David had alluded to, you're you're not ever just like attacking in this game. Your actions, you could always move, which is an action, but all of your abilities are tied to these cards. If you mm -hmm. want to do something in combat, you're using one of these cards. And I actually had a plan here. Um, what are you going to do, Ryan? Of what I was going to do, and that is uh, I'm going to use this ability called Steadfast. Okay. Uh, now, this is a skill. It's not necessarily an attack. And it does cost a fate token. So we do have these fate tokens up here. We start with three of them. A large part of the game is balancing using those and then finding ways to replenish them. Yeah, yeah, I have a bunch of abilities that just use them. If I use this ability, I have to have a fate token. So if there's not a fate token flipped face up, I'm not able to use those. I think so you're already of, you're already using our fate tokens. No, exactly. I have, well, so I have a way I have ways our to replenish them. Yeah, we all do. I have one like I have a built-in thing called refraction. If Lightweaver rolls a one on a damage roll, which by the way is not a great situation, uh, but as sort of consolation, I get to replenish yeah. one fate for us. But I also, as the Dawn Guard, I have this special ability. I have these devotion tokens, which mm -hmm. represent my character's devotion. I can spend these instead of fate tokens. Well, there you oh, go. Okay. So I'm actually just going to spend one of these instead to trigger this. Um, so I get to choose a hero mm -hmm. and move one their initiative card one space, um, left or right. Oh. Okay. Uh, so so I think I'm actually going to move you the knife, knife feather, feather one space up. Okay, so I'll go before any of the attacks. And then it nice. uh, gives it a status effect called pinned, okay. which says you're going to stay there in this exact spot for next round. So oh, you're not going nice. to move your initiative order. So you're going to go second twice. Um, so that was one action. And you can use two different ability cards, but you can only use each ability card once. Sorry, David, I can't. No, that's okay. I can't I get boost it. I you. Get it. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll be at the see. end of the line. Yeah, you wouldn't really want to be pinned, though, second to last. I no, feel for like sure. That's, okay. that's true. That's true. Pinned last. This range is only one. He's two spaces away. So actually, I can't really um, attack him right now. But what I'm going to do is get out of your space. Okay. Because I know that, because uh, we've looked at these cards, he has some ways of attacking everyone that's in a given space. Mm. So I'm at least going to try to get two spaces away. We also know that at the end of every one of his turns, he's going to run to one of these uh, numbered spaces. Okay. So I don't want to be in the uh, path of one of those either. Yeah, if so I'm you're just going to move way, here. It's not a great situation. Well, I guess I'm going to be in his way no matter where I go, but I, at least I'm going to be out of your space. Yeah, hopefully so, he goes to the goodbye. third space. So that's me. So we can exhaust this guy and show that he's been uh, used. So luckily, now it's Nightfeather. Okay, so I got to get up close to him in order to do some damage. So I'm going to move uh, up close. So my first action is going to be to take two movements into Crimson Hook Square. And then I think what I'll do is... I'll Kill do it. my piercing strike. So this one says if the target is the only enemy in the zone, which it is, is, the attack roll can be re-rolled 
and Ooh. I add plus two to the damage roll. So oh, nice. nice. All right, Let's try so the attack roll. The attack roll, it's all D20 based. So if you've played games, role playing games like D&D, you'll kind of be familiar to, to this. So, so they have a 12. I'm trying to beat a 12. Yeah, but you do get to add a, one of your characteristics to it. It's probably agility for you. Oh, yes, it is. So, agility. so add plus four. four. Well, 16. Boom. Okay. Hit it anyway. Well, that's great. Yeah. It is. I usually should roll all my dice. Yeah. And, and now oh. your damage die is a six-sider, right? Yep. yep. A six-sided die. So th she hit, so she's going to be a hit, but if she succeeds on this roll, mm -hmm. she's going to be able to do a critical hit, probably, yeah. depending so on your card. If you're looking at the Crimson Cook card right now, you're seeing that number 12 in the corner. That's the number that she had to roll in the d20, which she did. And then below it, you'll see the skull with the five next to it. That's the number you have to hit on the damage roll to do a critical hit. And I'm also going to get to add two to the damage roll. And you have a gem so. that adds to your damage roll too, don't you? No, it's to my attack roll. Oh, it's your attack roll. Okay. Which I was already beating. Oh, five. So that's going to do it. He's rolling all the dice. There and, we yeah, go. We're, we're going to let Emily roll all dice <laughs> forever and always. So I look and I see that I had a critical. I'm going to do two wounds and I get to dodge out. So... Oh, yeah. So let's talk about wounds normally. Yeah. Okay. So this is interesting in that the enemies don't really have HP. They have a defense. And as long as you hit that, you know, you do damage. And a lot of these attacks can still do damage on a hit, not necessarily just a critical. Yeah. When an enemy is dealt two damage, they're either dead or they're flipped over to like an enraged side. In the case of a boss, which we're fighting, they have three cards out on the initiative, theoretically three different enemies. Every time we do two damage to the boss, we're going to flip one of those over to the more difficult side. And it's actually going to go in initiative order. So, so that Venom Spit is going to get flipped. upgraded because you dealt two damage. Mm -hmm. Once we've upgraded all three, then we have to do two sets of damage again and start removing them. So really, you effectively have to do, what, 12 damage? Effectively, uh, Effectively yeah. to the to boss to be able off. to knock it out. So. Well, I've done some for us, so there's oh, that, that was a, at least. That was great. Um, and that is my turn. And so then it's going to go to the Crimson Hook and they're going to do the Venom Spit. Yeah, and they're attacking uh, with the person that's on the lowest order. Yes, attack the hero with the lowest initiative for both the attack A and B. So that is you, David. So you're getting attacked oh. twice now. Awesome. Enemies <laughs> don't ever roll dice. So David, you're going to roll your D20 like normal. But you're getting to add your defense to that Which value. is zero, by the way. Do you have anything that gives you extra defense? I no do item, not. no passive ability. I do have the celestial band. If he were to do fire damage, I could ignore that. But oh. I don't think that's I don't think the venom happen. spit is quite. No, it that sounds firing. a little more poisony to me. It does. So I need to beat his twelve. You need to beat his twelve. You need to beat his twelve with your roll here. Otherwise you're gonna take a wound and be pinned. I did not, did not beat no. his 12. It's a wound and pinned? Yes. So you are wounded so, now. So I take, take a, a wound card, card face down. And pin David into the last spot on an so issue. So you are pinned last spot. I don't like that this came out with the enemy going three times in a row. No, that's rough. This is, this is really rough, actually. And then the Venom Spit's going to happen again, again to you. So you need to roll again. Cool. And Here we go. I'm 12 this time, David. This time. 12. He yes. got it. Okay, so then you avoided the other wound and poison. So nice. That's All right, and then Crimson Hook triggers a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of every one of their moves, they oh, roll a I, d4. Sorry. I forgot to say that on my turn, I dodged too. Oh, that's your innate ability? Or well, your... it's at the critical. That was the last thing. That might be bad. If he moves to one, he's going to move through you. We'll see. He's moving to two. So all the way out there. So all the way over here. And he's going to go through as many heroes as possible when he makes his move. Yikes. When he moves through your space... Um, he's going to push you and potentially cause damage to you if you fail your agility check. So that's going to be all He's not going to go us. the shortest route? So it's the same. Oh, you would go the shortest route. One, so two. Me. He's going to okay. skip you, David. Yeah. It's me and you. I'm just hanging out in the middle. Because he moved into our spaces. So the first thing that happens is we both get pushed. Okay. And push is going to be away from him. So he kind of powered you through. And then they have to make an agility save uh, against the target number 10 to not take a wound. Oh, at least um, my dexterity is And then so. uh, mine's not. So you, you should roll first because this is going to be probably bad for me. Okay. So dexterity, we'll I have to go for 10. Is that what you said? Yeah, it's 10 for this. You get plus four to it. Oh, oh Jesus. But that that's a two. Two plus four is still six. All right. So, so you'll take a wound. Enough. This will be terrible if I'm the one that survives this. Nope, I'm taking a wound as well. So, so our plan was okay. to play two rounds. But we'll <laughs> see. No, we're fine. It's okay. So then he's going to go again. Uh, he's next in the initiative order with Lash Out. Uh, this is going to target the person that's highest in the initiative order, which is the Dawn Guard. So that's me. That's you. And his attack is against a 12. So I have plus one of my defense roll from my Sun Shield. 
and I have a plus one inherent defense. So I have to roll at least a 10. So that's like a 50% chance. I mean, okay. that's exactly a 50% chance. And I but did you not make still. it. That's fine. I'll take a second damage. My, uh, I have five hit points, so I'm okay. I I'll survive. I only have four. Um, so, and then, you, so on a hit, you took a wound, and then you're getting and pushed. And I'm getting pushed again. So I'll get pushed over here. And now if he rolls a three, he's going to run through me again. Because remember, at the end of every one of his activations, he's going to move somewhere else. Oh, boy. And well, it's a three. So I'm getting pushed. He'll push me out because he's coming this way. And then I have to try to survive again against the target number ten. Okay, that time I made it. That time got it. You got it. So I'm, I've got two damage. Now, it's not the end of the world right now. If one of our characters dies, we have health potions, which we could use to revive our character. But only two. But only and they two. have two left from the chapter, so we'll Once see what happens. Once those are gone and we die. Then it's game over. Done, done. It's done, done. All right, well, last shot's done. Okay. And then we have the Arachnid yeah. Rush. Yeah, this is going to target the closest next person on the initiative order. That sounds again, like that's me you, again. David. Uh, but he's going to attack everyone in your zone. Oh, oh so no. it's us. And we got to yes. check his movement. His movement's four, so he can basically move anywhere he needed to move. Uh, except actually he's going to go, it's two spaces either way. So he's going to go through me as well. Uh, and then it's going to attack everyone in uh, each here, each zone that she even moved into during the charge. So she's attacking all of us now. Whoa. Because Jesus. of the arachnid rush. Oh my gosh. Um, so this is a 12 to dodge, but it's a regular defense. So I, again, I need to roll at least a 10. No. I didn't. So on a hit, a two. she's going to do one damage to me. The damage, the push doesn't happen? No, uh, it does either way. And then uh, poison. There's a poison in here. This is going to so be bad. Poison? So okay. poison does nothing the first time you take it, but okay. as you take more poisons, it starts to Yikes. add on to you. Um, so it's a 12 to... All right, here we go. Come on, 12, 3. Did you? That didn't even roll. You just dropped that on the <laughs> table. I'm just like, have it magnetically so that all of my rolls Here's are Here's your damage card. And uh, poison. But you already and have a poison, poison token for oh, some reason. Oh, yeah. So you're fine. Attacks everybody. Let's go, David. Three. Oh, also a three. This is a way to die. This is a way to die. We're going to swap out. Oh, you rolled different dice. <laughs> I've got three of my four damage. That's okay. FYI. We, can, we can find ways to, to deal with this. And I haven't gone yet. Okay, but the enemy went three times in a row. That's bad. And then they're hopefully they don't move to space one here. Four. Four. Oh, that's Which is me. where you are. Gosh dang And it. they move through us. Oh my gosh. This thing's less like... So it's going to push... Hitting, hitting, hitting. And it's going to push you guys... I, I would probably say back there, right? You want to be safe. Well, if he moves... Man... Boy, we're gonna lose pretty quick, aren't we? I mean, it's 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 dangerous. It's These very are dangerous. Spaces, correct? Dangerous. Those are state. Yeah, those are spaces. So we so gotta can roll. Can you push us to different places then? Each one of you to a different spot. Yeah. Yeah. Theoretically, you want to be in two different spots. Well, I think we so, get to right? choose when he's pushing. We get to choose. Because you purposely tried to not be in the same spot as me, right? And that's I... true. So maybe you we want could... to spread out just I a little will, bit. I will go here because I can still use my range from here. And then we all have to do agility against ten. A uh, two, so no. Well, hey, I've got a four damage here. A fifteen. David made it. There we go. I I live to fight another. <laughs> Emily, you you only made it again. It was a three. The three. Well, she, you started rolling well. All right, so that's my last. I have only. Did you already out. get knocked out? Yes. Yeah. All right, so then so we're gonna give you a healing health potion. potion. Heal so, me, baby. And it also takes away your status conditions as well. So poison. Oh, silver lining. Silver lining, that one poison, poison token goes away, too. Your dead body is no longer poison. <laughs> Boy, okay, David, do some real work here. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, so it's work. on me. I have, so I have a thing called range extender, which I got that says here, and I upgraded it as well. This oh. hero can spend fate to add plus one to their attack range during an attack. Once per turn, this hero can use this ability without spending fate. So I am going to use that without spending fate okay. uh, this first time. Um, and I am going to use my arcane bolt against him. So nice. I am rolling against his... 12. 12. Yep. And you add... Uh, and I'm adding four, though, because your intelligence. Okay. intelligence. Uh, I am the magic user, after all. No. Do you have anything to... Um, add to it, Buffett? Oh, but you know what you forgot to... Actually, uh, I do have mysterious coin. Yeah, and I can re-roll an action roll. And don't forget, you can spend one of your fates to add a d4 to that roll too. Even after you roll it. Well, no. you oh. can I'm going to use my mysterious coin. 
Because you're going to get another roll. That's consumable. To re-roll my action roll. You want to add a fate to it or no? Should I? I think I'm going to. Should I? I think you should. I can replenish it. And I'm rolling a d4 with it? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you roll a 1 on the damage die, it comes back anyway. A 1 and a (laughs) 1. Don't even say that. A 3 and a 14. You actually didn't even need it. 17 plus 4, so I'm good. So much, I hit. You gotta, and then you gotta roll damage and now see if it's a critical. Critical is gonna be what's his a five, a five or a six, I unless you a have five. a damage. Boost. I have a plus one from the ruby in my arcane. So focus. you need to roll a four, five, or six. A six. Oh, natural nice. six. That's so, great. So critical hit on the arcane bolt is two damage. Cool. Oh, that's enough to just flip over the next card. So lash, lash out's out. Getting flipped. It's getting so flipped. like we we're getting bounced damage. around a lot and yeah. damaged a lot, but also we've already done two of the three cards. That is true. That is true. For, not, the first, for the first time. And that was just my first action. Oh. So I've got another one, and I think I'm going to do Magic Blast. Now, this time I would have to use Fate to use my yeah. range. Well, use a Fate, and you might as well use a Fate to... Well, no, you want to say... You wanna, I'm not going to use no. all our Fate. <laughs> no. I'm, okay. It was a Ryan crazy. I'm it's just saying, <laughs> it's, a, it's an opportunity. But I am going to use... Ra- Fate to get the extra range for my range extender. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to roll better. Oh, You got this. You roll eight or Nine higher. Three. Six. Mm. That makes it a ten. Mm. You have anything else that adds Six. to it? Uh, I uh, Well, let's see. Uh, no, I do not. Dang. Failure. What does it do on a miss? No, he didn't, he didn't. Magic Blast does nothing on a miss. Dang. Some abilities do. Arcane my, my mine do. Yeah. I like the abilities that do things on a miss. Okay, so we're at, uh, that's it. That's it for the round one. So it is round one. I did. Oh. I do want to point out I missed something, and there is a oh. fair amount of things. When you collect cards, you want to make sure and read them all. My arcane bolt. Not that I needed this, but when making the damage roll, uh-huh. you basically roll another die and take the higher. Oh, almost two like having the advantage rolls. on that roll. And I think I got that maybe when I upgraded it. So yeah. here's where things are going to get really bad for us. I'm going back. You're to the bringing book. out the book. Okay, because right now. We have reinforcements. Okay. We have to roll a d4 for four different sets of enemies that are going to come out. Do we now, want Emily to roll it? I don't, maybe not, right? I all did, in, I did pull out the cards in advance so that we can add them in. Okay. Uh, um, this is going to be bad. However, uh, there are certain cards we may have collected that prevent certain enemies from being added. Um, oh, yeah. I think the Brigand Lieutenant will come into play. You do. So we're actually, so that's going to get rid of uh, this giant spider. So... Oh, we it? will not face the giant spider. I mean, that's not bad. And one <laughs> brigand. So we'll, we already we'll have, have a giant spider on the yeah. board, ish. That's true. <laughs> so we have to add three veteran raiders. So you're gonna roll the die, and we're gonna add them to one of those four summon spots. One. One. Right by oh, you. Well, that's right, right by you. Me. That's these little assassin guys over here. Do you want to slide those up there? Okay. Watch, it's all gonna be ones. Oh, all right, roll it again. Uh, for this time, we have brutes. You do the honors, Emily. These guys are these don't giant roll the guys. One. Four. Four. Oh, so the, he gets two brutes with him. Ooh. All right. Now it's brutes worth noting that some brutes. of these enemies we're adding have special abilities. The brute has defensive line. Okay. The enemy, uh, this enemy, the brute, and any other enemies uh, in its same zone uh-huh. uh, can't suffer more than one damage. Oh. Any Seven other times. goblin enemies? I see. Uh, so he's marked as like a goblin. So. I see. The Crimson Hook is fine. So we can still do damage to the Crimson Hook. Gotcha. All right. And then we're going to add in uh, a Reaver and a Brigand Tamer. Which, Where are they going? Is this together? It's actually uh, two Brigand Tamers. Is this one roll for them? Yep. And a Reaver. In one. Oh, there you no. go, David. You're having a party over I there, David. not have rolled again. Wow. You've got... They saw you do... Half of the board is like nothing. Right. They're all, they all just rushed David. Um, the Brigand Tamer... Mm-hmm. Uh, if the enemy, uh, if this enemy wounds a hero, uh-huh. oh, he would unexhaust the spider, but the spider is not even in this fight because oh, we got lucky with that. Uh, however, the reaver I know has a pretty bad one. Um, enemies with another enemy in their same oh. zone uh-huh. get a bonus to their attack. We, we roll our defense at disadvantage, Yikes. uh, which means we're going to roll two dice and take the lowest for defense. Now, so when, we're about to get pummeled, when I we, think. When we redo the marching order... Emily is pinned. Emily is in always what, second. The second position. I'm pinned in the last position. No, you're oh. pinned in whatever position you were in, uh, which is I think. So. Sixth. sixth. Okay. Oh, okay. 
So, you so I would won't necessarily been... be last. No, now that we have more people, you might actually be. That might actually be better. No, I, I will All at right. least be in front of somebody. You want to shuffle these up and um, put them out? Sure. Just make sure not to change their sides at all, because some of them, some of these monsters also flip. Yeah. And we have yeah. to do four damage to those. Again, two damage to flip it, two damage to yeah, remove it. Yeah, kind of like the the uh, abilities of the boss. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so no what do we got? Ours. The tamers first. Well, here you can. I can't reach. Yeah. And the then reaver. the reaver, and then the venom spit, and then the lash out. David. And oh then, no, I'm like last. Yeah, you're pretty oh. far out there. That's really bad because I have an ability that. Um, and then the brute, and then the veteran. I have an ability that gives everybody advantage on their attacks. Uh huh. But I'm not gonna be able to use. Oh. I'm way way at the end there. All right. <laughs> Well, this starts our round. So the brigand tamer is going to go first. All right. Now, uh, these enemies, the non-boss enemies, work a little differently. And if you've played any of the exploration, they work kind of the same way. They're just kind of assisting the boss here in this fight. But each one is going to have kind of a, a combat focus, um, a mode of combat. This guy in particular is uh, ferocious. Mm. So you look for the ferocious card. And these cards are basically the AI for the enemies. And you're going to resolve it for each one of that particular enemy that's on the field. What's neat about these cards is that sometimes they all like will have a unconditional ability that they always do. And then a variety of conditional abilities where you'll see what they've met. And you'll kind of go down the line until they have a condition they can actually do. Okay. Uh, and there will always be one on these cards that they can do. Uh, so let's find, uh, where are the brigand tamers? Everybody's in one. Oh, we've got two of them. The so we got two of them. Okay. So the first thing they're going to do, if they can, they're going to attack a hero in the same zone. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, that didn't take long. I'm, and, um, I'm here having a talk with them. To you're rolling at disadvantage, too, because of that uh, Reaver's ability, David. So this is for the first one. This is for the first one. Well, everyone, it's been nice no knowing idea. you. You can roll two tens here. You did? Oh, you did. A 15 did. and a 17. So nice. on, a, on a miss, he doesn't do anything. So you're good. But that was just one of them, But that right? was one. Yeah. And now the so second. So another disadvantage? Yeah. Yeah. Also disadvantage. <laughs> Lightning strikes? Not twice. Not twice. twice. So no. you are taking a damage here. Is that four damage? That is four damage. Well, we have one more healing potion. So these go back? Yeah. All right. This time for real, though. I need to no survive. I, I need to survive this turn because I have my green herb that can heal me. I just need to get like to me. So oh. that was both um, brigand tamers. Okay. They didn't wound. Oh, it doesn't matter what they did anyway. Um, cool. All right, so you're up, Emily. Maybe you could save us. All right. So how can I save you all? Mm. Um, do you have a supply of potions on you by chance? I do not. So I have the firebrand spirits, but that just starts be throwing fire everywhere. I'm okay with and that. I don't if that's... know that that's really what we're trying Rotten to go for. Right of now. Glory. Um, I'm going to do something though. So since I went away from all of that nonsense, I think I'm going to try to do my throwing knives, which add one to this hero's attack range during this attack. So that way I can attack something in there. And what is the worst thing? Well, there's that reaver that's giving them all, making us roll that's disadvantage. This thing right here. Okay, so let's let's go for that reaver first. So he's at an 11 yeah. that I'm trying to hit. Um, yes, so let's try to roll that 11. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be adding my four dexterity and also I have plus one to attack rolls. So you're adding five to this So roll. I'm adding five to this. So I just need to hit a six. And oh. I got a four. <laughs> that's a no. Um, so that's a miss for me. This is going to be bad uh, for me, I can tell you. With a miss, I can dodge. Uh, so I do I want to do I want to move? I guess I could move even like further away and move to that. No. Are you able to attack from your next space? Um, I do have another one that is at one range. So well, you have another chance to knock him out. I do. OK, let's let's move. Like... Or you could roll into it. <laughs> I don't think like I want to go idea. into them. Why would you want to go into that mess? So here or here? Uh, let's go here. I, don't, I think I want to stay. I'm glad I'm actually kind of far away from that mess. 
Yeah, yeah a lot I of my stuff are. too is, the middle of it. is about if it's the only enemy in the zone, which was great oh. first round. And now there's sure. all of our enemies are all in the exact right. same uh-huh. zones. If I weren't so late in the order, I could do my Azure leap and oh, you could. push them out. Yeah, but, that would have been nice. But I'm also pretty late I'm in the order. This down. is bad. Okay, so I'm going to do my taunt next. And that's add one to this hero's attack range again during this attack. So if this attack hits, after resolving the effects, the target can be placed into the same zone as the hero. So at least... Oh. I could then maybe take him out of the Draw zone him out. Yeah. and not make it so bad for Still all of Still against you. the veteran? Um, well, is there anyone who's doing something in that zone specifically? No, I no, think right? they can all move in. They can all move into the zone if they need to. So Okay. So, yes, we'll do still against the vet- veteran. Okay, let's see. Come mm. on. Better luck this time. No. Oh, worse luck worse this luck. time. <laughs> she went from a four to a three. Do you have a reroll? Yeah, I said the okay. hero can reroll their first attack roll each turn. Oh, their turn. first attack roll. Oh, oh did you never reroll? Did you not reroll your first I attack didn't roll re- there? I did reroll the first one. Oh, well, you should do that. Okay, so let's go back to that one for a second. Don't forget that. And that would have been a nine plus the four. That would have hit. Plus the five. Yeah. Yeah. And But it would have critical, though. I don't know if it would critical hit. Well, she's still going to dodge out of that space. Yeah, that's true. All right, so let's see. That one needs to get a four. And it you does. It. So what does it do? I think it just flips, right? No, uh, I don't. What's the critical effect of that one? Oh. Two wounds. So yep. So because it's two wounds, uh, this one. Is he a flip or? A... That's not the. No. no, it's not him. It's uh, yeah, the reaver. There he is. I was like somewhere on the initiative track. Um. So the reaver. Let's see, he does flip. Yep. And now on his flip side, that ganging up isn't a thing anymore. But instead, it says if this enemy wounds a hero. You'll flip the card again. Oh, so he uh, heals himself back up. Basically. So he's just going to come back into a play. All right. Well, so since you're done, your pin comes off. Unfortunately, you don't get to keep oh. staying second. That would be yeah. nice, though. Yeah, right. Um, so he's going to go next. Uh, he's going to target with that that ferocious. Again, he's also ferocious. So he's going to attack whoever's in the same zone with him first. These ferocious like guys, that. they're angry. If he wounds you, this card flips. Oh, he's back. Oh, back. God. So remember, I just said so. Uh, you need an eleven or higher. And you're rolling at disadvantage still. No, because no, you no, flipped because him. We remember, flipped him. because we flipped him. So you're not at disadvantage at least, at the very least. Yeah. You got that going for you. I have helped you somewhat. Please <laughs> use that help. <laughs> um, I do have stone skin salve. Well, that sounds mm. important. When this hero is attacked, they can use this card to pass the defense roll without mm-hmm. rolling any dice. After using this card, the hero suffers and the, the icon's a little weight. So oh, the, yeah, the fatigue. So should I use that just so we can survive uh, a little bit longer? Or should I take the hit? I don't want to. If you take the hit, he flips back to healthy. Yeah, I don't really want him to. I want, of all things, I want him to stay, not him. Yeah, because he's yeah, going to get that gang up back let's, again. Let's, let's use it then. All right, so you become uh, fatigued, you said? Mm-hmm. I do become fatigued. And you automatically pass that test. So fatigue means your next action is going to be at disadvantage. So oh, keep that in mind, whatever advantage Just you Just that next action? Just your and next, very away. next action, then it goes away. Okay. But we stopped the reaver from flipping, and that's really good. So next is the venom spit, which is the crimson hook still doing yep. it. And the lowest, yeah. That's, that's me. You. So I have to you, roll you, you. 12 twice. Actually, I have to roll tens oh, uh, both times. So we'll see what happens. Ten. There you go. Ten. You got one more. Okay. One more in you. I do I have one more in me? Hey! Eighteen. Here we go. Nice. All right. So you passed both of them. I do not get super those worried words. about this D four roll though, because now he's gonna he's gonna charge somebody. Remember, after every one of Crimson Hook's turns, oh yeah, he runs around Doing to chaos. space three, which is going to be right, <laughs> comes right the, through me. Yeah. Right train. through me. All aboard. And I have to roll a 10 again. Actually, I have one agility, so I have to roll a nine or higher. I mean, that's Come better. On, that's that's better I just need to make it to my turn. If I can make it to my turn, I can heal. 18, 18. Again. again. Okay, okay. All right, all right. All right, and then Crimson Hook's not done yet, though, because now they're going to lash out. Yeah, because of all that, he's lashing but out. But this time, he charges the person with the highest initiative. Yeah, that's going to be you. That's me. Um, so, uh, one, two spaces. So he's not going to yep. hit anybody but you. Um, and either way, you're going to get pushed, but he may or may not do damage to you. So we'll so see. So she should be pushed? 
So go ahead and push me out that way. Yep. Okie doke. And then I need to roll against a 12 for defense. Let's see. 10. I have one. That's an 11. Uh, is that enough? No, no, I need to get the 12. So is that is going to hit me for one damage. This is just regular damage. They can do uh, like critical damage, which is a, a much worse effect. I think regular damage is enough, quite yes. frankly. <laughs> and then they're going to oh, move Oh, man. Again. He's going to move again. Oh. Where are we going? I hope it's four. Actually, I just don't You're want... You're fine. I'm it's fine. Just it just might well, be just a one. one. It's a two. Okay, two. So one, one two, two is the fastest nice. route for him yeah. to get here. All right. Goodbye. Okay. All Life right. It's through our turns. Actually, oh. I've, I've survived. It's to me. Because I will get the chance to heal myself. One, one nice, damage. Thank That's God. good. Yes. So, Lightweaver. Oh, what? What to do? I want to just get out of here. You're you're good. Oh, you could do your Azure Pounce thing. I could. I think I might do that one, two. And that's the thing that's going to be disadvantaged? Uh, it, well, this is just a... A passive. This is, it's not a passive, but it's just something I do. I think the next time I would roll, it would be a disadvantage, okay. right? Yeah. So next Azure, action is a disadvantage. Azure Leap says, place this hero up to three zones away. Then each enemy in the hero's zone suffers a push. A push? You so, want to get him out so I can attack him? I have some abilities that let me do one range away. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I have some magic spell, like a blinding light. Yeah, I could do that. So I'm going to Azure Leap right here. Yeah. And push I'm going to push him this way. Nice. So that was my Azure Leap. Uh, and now... Burn him. I will. I will use my Arcane... Uh, do you have one that yeah. does two damage on a crit? I do. My arcane bolt could. Well, both of them could, uh, but my arcane bolt is better if I miss. It is also a good thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so arcane bolt, and he is what again? 12? 12. He's a 12 to hit. And I'm rolling at a plus four, just a yeah, plus I think just four. Yeah, plus four. Yeah, and because I'm at a disadvantage, I have to roll two dice here. So. Yeah, for your fatigue. You could do it. Uh, uh, no. Neither no. one hit. No. At least you uh, didn't. Do you have a reroll? Any kind of rerolls? I have nothing of the sort. Well, your fatigue goes away at least. So. That's, <laughs> Woo! I feel refreshed. So a little like a weight's been lifted. Um, well, that was me. All right. Well, you moved him, so now I can actually uh, attack. Um, actually, here's what I'm going to do first. So this is going to be. I'm going to take one of my devotion tokens. This is pen penitence. This is one of my skills. Okay. Place a devotion token in a zone up to two spaces away. All enemies in that zone are considered to have zero movement. Oh, so you want to do uh, that? Uh, I it's think actually the brutes. Really? Because well, these guys have range, uh -huh. so they're gonna uh, they just won't move. Okay. Um, but the brutes have, have to range. move because they have. True. Sure. So, yeah, I'm gonna use my pendants on them. And they cannot move out of that okay, space. Okay, so just don't go there. Well, right. I'm, I'm not going to go there. I mean, I wasn't there. planning on it, for sure. <laughs> um, oh, and I'm going to use my green herb uh, yes, please, potion to uh, heal myself. Thank you. So I'm not Take on the verge of, of the I'm not at the verge of death anymore. Oh, that's right. We were out of potions and you were that close. Yeah, yes, I, the that's whole what time. I was saying. If that roll had been bad, it would have been the end for me. How could he do this to us, right? Just live. Come on, like Don. We did. You're the right. leader. I mean... I'm going to do Guiding Strike, which is uh, adds plus one to my attack range, so I can't hit his attack range. Okay. Um, if I succeed, I give you a blessing, which will give you advantage on your next roll for next oh. round. So, As if we're going to be alive. Then. What is it? A 12? <laughs> uh, this is a with my yep. plus four here. So, yeah, that 13. definitely hits. Nice. Uh, and then I got to decide if it's a critical. So we're going to roll the D6 and hopefully get a 5 or 6. 6. Nice. There we go. Uh, so critical criticals is going to push him. So I'm going to okay. push him here. Sure. It's going to do one damage to him. Okay, so we'll put one damage on him. And it's going to refresh one of our uh, point tokens. Oh, yeah, nice. Eight. But then also my ability says if my attack pushes you... Oh, no, out of his own containing a hero. He ah. didn't, so never mind. Um... But then, David, you're going to get a blessing. So, thank you. Keep this blessing Blessed. close. That's going to give you advantage on your next roll. All right. All right. I survived to fight another day. And uh, unfortunately, it's another day. Arachnid. And uh, <laughs> Crimson, yeah, Crimson's going to Arachnid day. Rush. Uh, the person closest to him in initiative order, which is me. Which is you. Um, Once again. So, I'm really glad that I took that potion 
All right, so he's gonna charge to me because I'm the closest, like we said, and then attack me. So uh, I need to roll at least, I've got two defense, so I need to roll at least a 10 here. So Oh, to get to the 12? To survive this attack, I need to roll a 10 or higher. Let's go. 12. Boom. That does he's it. Natural Easy. 12. That, natural what, 12. Nat, yes, natural 12, <laughs> an unnatural 14. So that's enough to survive, uh, but he still has a negative effect. So on the miss, push. he's still gonna push you. Uh, and then push. he's still gonna do his, he's still gonna charge. So still hopefully, moving around. Uh, let's not roll a two here. Yeah, three maybe. Three's, yes. three's fine. He just turns right back around. Maybe he just backed Attack, up. Come back. Attack, come back. Attack, come back. He just backed up. <laughs> Slowly backed out of the room. All right. Uh, he's done. Now we got some brutes. All right, and the brutes are dedicated. Um, now, with any luck, dedicated, they're going to do very disciplined. little. Well, we did. Uh, well, we did we'll see. Pin them there. They have no range, I don't think. So, still, looking at the discipline card, um, they would try to attack a hero in their zone. None of us ran in there. No. That's good. Good. They'll charge a hero in an engaged zone, which again, none of us are. None of us okay. are engaged. We're all by ourselves. Then they would charge an unengaged hero, which Yikes. means... We are would, unengaged. They'd move to whoever they could reach. Uh, unfortunately for them, their movement is now zero, so they can't reach yeah. anybody. Because of your thing okay. that you did, right? Yeah. Yes, because of that ability, their speed then, is zero. Uh, and then move uh, towards the closest hero. Which again, um, they, they, again, they can't, can't do. do. So they effectively... Oh, that was no nice. Turn. That was actually a good choice. Sigh of relief. Yeah. That was a good choice putting it on them. Okay. But at least right. Until we find out what happens here. But the, we still have the veteran raider. Yeah, the veteran raider. So these guys are unique actually in that they have two AI cards. They have their regular attack ability card. Okay. And then they have a retreat card. This basically stops you from rushing in. If you rush to them, they're mm -hmm. going to keep moving away from you and like shooting arrows uh, at you as they retreat. Uh, so. Okay. okay. Yeah, but they're going to do their cautious card. So they're going to attack the closest hero. Uh, well, that, that is, is a tie you? between the two of us. Um, so goes... we're going to go to initiative order, and uh, that's you. Me? Uh, okay. Unfortunately. So they're going to attack me? They're going to attack you, and they're uh, you're going to roll an 11 okay. to dodge. Come on, defense. Eight. Plus one? Nine? No. Yeah, but nine is still not 11. All right. well, you're, <laughs> that's not how numbers that's, work. You're right. My math is, you know. Okay, that's one of them. Uh, and a hit, they give me a wound and a bleeding. Oh, they still oh, bleeding. Yeah. Uh, so bleeding, we can grab it out of here. Uh, it's not going to be super um, important in a boss battle, but outside of boss battles, you're going to be drawing event cards. Oh yeah. And the lower, yeah, the bleed actually like triggers a lower value, so you have worse effects. Okay, and then we got another one still attacking me. Yeah. Oh, better. better. That's natural a natural 20. twenty. Hey, we get one of our fate tokens back. Yay. Very cool. Hey, we're gonna go into the third round actually looking pretty good. All right, one more of them. I mean, though. I don't know about looking pretty good. There's another one still. Oh There's three gosh. over there. Jesus Christ. Three. That my one's favorite not so good. number. That was not so good. Okay, so I take another wound and another bleed and another bleed, which is fine. You're gonna be okay. All right, was that the last of the... That was the last one. And that was the last uh, one. Unfortunately for us, there's no more reinforcement phase. No. Oh, thank so God. So <laughs> that was just at the end of the very first round. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, so, yeah, we're in a really tight spot here. Uh, but hopefully this little glimpse of the gameplay has been enough for you to see th how difficult a boss fight can be or how the important the decisions you're making are. Uh, this is a very tactical game, and I'm not sure that we made the best tactical decisions. I mean, we'll come back after we finish yeah, this and let you know, but my, I'm not a betting man, but I'm going to guess we we'll can turn it around. We'll be back in just a minute. We can turn it around. We got this, right? We got this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our fearless leader here. No, uh, just because I'm the tank doesn't mean I necessarily have to. You're the intelligent. You've got four intelligence. Yeah, and I am telling you, with all my intelligence, I don't like our odds right now. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to reshuffle these. Develop a new marching order and then jump into the next round. We'll let you know how it goes here in just a minute. And welcome back to the aftermath. The whole like what 10, 10 minutes later? I don't even know if it was ten. We, we made it three turns into round three. <laughs> three turns in the uh, some cool things happened though because the brute. That's that's true. The brute went first. We got a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, one thing I didn't um, really notice or really think about the effect of that that penitence that gave those brutes zero move. That lasts until my next turn. Which was great. Which was great because they actually went before me. They were actually first in the mm -hmm. initiative order on round three. So they didn't really so they didn't move. They, they got to do nothing that entire game, which was really, really good. Um, so I, they, you I got was to do pretty, something, David. Yeah, I, I was optimistic. I, I did a thing. I, I killed the, the Reaver? Reaver, which was the guy who would flip if he would do damage. Yeah, the gang up guy. That kind was... of my nemesis in the <laughs> long, uh, arduous battle here. 
Uh, I did take him out, but then my second thing didn't do anything. But I felt successful. Yeah, see, I'm glad I blessed you. See, but that, that was, blessing came that back. That was only uh, a short-lived success, though. Yeah. Because yeah. then yeah. They had, the Venom Spit. The Venom Spit, yeah. The Crimson Hook strikes once again. And the Venom Spit was the thing that hit the lowest initiative, which this time was me. From across the board. From across the board. You are up to five spaces away. You're not safe yeah. anywhere. I already yeah. had three wounds, so I only needed one more to die. And so I would have had to escape both of them and i didn't even make it past the first Ugh. one so yeah that was bad yeah that was that rough was gonna be hard for that, us to that's get a past. hard one that's a hard one and you don't have a ton of defense no i don't so i only have one defense and like i don't have anything adding to my defense so it was like we were not in a great situation for that one yeah so it was a very very short lived <laughs> uh, i really round. thought i was gonna die because i'm pretty low in the initiative order too and they're all acting i thought for sure I was going to be the dead one. But. Yeah, you were low, but you were way over here. I mean, once these guys started going, it would have been. But we didn't. We will never know. Didn't even get to that part. We, we never, never made know. it that far. We didn't even survive to find we out. We can how imagine, we died. though, that would have probably killed a thousand us ways to die. We could have had. I mean, we, we. It was tough. So, well, thank you for watching, everyone. I mean, hopefully, you got a pretty good idea of how a boss fight is going to look, uh, and how that tactical combat uh, plays out, and our decisions really mattered. I think. We could have probably done a little bit better sure. uh, if we were, you know, we, we probably could have made some smarter sure. decisions. Um, it wasn't necessarily that we lucked into a loss. Like, we, we could have turned that around. We just, I don't know, we just didn't. Um, so, if this kind of combat appeals to you, there's a lot more of it in the game. A lot of different boss fights. A lot of different, like, dungeon delve chapters. We're actually mm. moving through those dungeons. Yeah, the exploration. And those chapters are significantly different. And there's a lot of content out there on YouTube uh, that covers it. It's the other side of this board. You're actually going around a dungeon, flipping tiles. And it is a slower, more methodical phase of this game. And then you've got this that's sort of the other hand. Well, the giant it sets boss you up battle, for yeah. this, right? It does set it you up for this. And then this is a big slap in the face. Yeah, I mean, this is like a... We had, I mean, and we had, you know, this crazy I mean, spider. And those exploration sections can also get hairy, too. But they're just a sort of a slightly different experience. They're kind of both sides of the coin. And we so. probably could have spent more time exploring the chapter to find more of those cards that... Maybe we've gotten Cancel, rid of some more. Getting rid of some of these, these enemies because that's what really got us. Yeah. Not, I mean, he was doing just fine on his own, bouncing around and sure. knocking us all yeah, over. Yeah, he and was everything. crazy. That, that, I mean, all of the enemies. I mean, we never really saw the brutes in action. Good, thank God. These guys weren't too bad. It was that spider man, the crimson hook, just running around like crazy. I know. It was intense. And we did, we only did four out of twelve damage, but still four out of twelve damage. Like we got a third of the way there. So. Ryan's ever looking the optimist. For the I'm just saying, <laughs> if we were to play this one again, I bet we could do better. The it was the time. most successful loss I've ever experienced. <laughs> 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 Thank you all uh, so much for watching. Sorry that we didn't make it all the way through, that we no. didn't have better news to bring back to you. But thank you both for joining today as we played. Uh, again, the game is Bardsung from Steamforge Games, a uh, cooperative dungeon delve RPG with a ton of narrative options, a ton of different branching paths, different endings, just a lot of content in the box. So if you like what you see here, check that out to get more of this. And until we see you next time, keep having fun at the table.